Man. Howdy. How nice you? to meet you. I'm Dylan Meeks. Good morning. I'm with Beverly Commercial Real Estate. Dylan, thanks for uh, coming to see me. Dean, is, I'm glad I finally got to see you. I know last time, you know, that our first meeting, you know, I ended up with Kirk, and that was great. It was How'd a pleasure to meet him. It went well. It went well. I think we got a good fundamental understanding of just kind of where New Quest is at. And, um, you know, that's kind of why I'm excited for our meeting today is because I've had worked with similar companies such as New Quest to help them get a foothold in the college station market. And I think we can do the same with you today. I'm really looking forward to that. You told me a little bit about the property, so I'm interested. By the way, I, I sent you a text. Did you did you get that information? I, you know, I, I did. I'm kind of interested in another site I saw online and just kind of curious about it. I did. I did. Okay. And real quick before we get started, I was looking on your profile on New Quest. I saw you've almost been a partner for 20 years now. Yeah. Congratulations I have, I on that. Say it kind of dazed me. <laughs> well, I mean, 20 years as a partner. I what's the exact date? When is that coming so, up? So 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 two. So yeah, it, uh, February of of 22 was the what the. Full anniversary. That was the full anniversary. Yeah. Okay, so that's already happened. Well, congratulations. You know, I'm glad I'm, I'm able to be talking with you. That's awesome. But yeah, so you mentioned that other property. I know you know a little bit about this property. So just a quick agenda so that way we can be efficient with our time. Right. Real quick, how much is good with you? I was informed 20 minutes. Is yeah, that still working? 20 minutes or so. That's perfect. Perfect. So a quick agenda, and this is flexible, but I'd like to just ask a few more questions, just kind of get an understanding if anything's changed since our last meeting. And then I'll go ahead, I'll share about this property, just make sure we're on the same page. Perfect. And then we can kind of discuss that other property. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Um, anything you'd like to add to that? No, I just, uh, let's just jump into it and let's see, uh, yeah. we'll see where we go. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I guess to start off, as far as the decision making process goes, what kind of criteria do you look at? And in our last meeting, you know, he had told me a little bit, but. Oh, so, so I have three partners, and, and generally we'll sit down, and it's I wouldn't call it a board meeting, but we'll sit down and we'll kind of discuss opportunities. Um, you know, if, if we think the criteria is there, uh, the, the, the use is there, and certainly the economics, yeah. then, uh, you know, we kind of vote, vote to move forward, and we'll start spending money if it's the right side. Okay, and I just want to make sure I got everything, you have the, the use, economics, um, anything else yeah. as far as no, that I, I think you know that's probably a good start okay well perfect and I know that things have been a little rough lately as far as economics go and it's kind of you know it's obviously it's funny you mentioned that right I know that that's been a little bit tough especially kind of in the real estate market has that been making you guys have to really tighten down your restrictions as far well, as there's no question economics and cost are, are key to development and so you really have to understand it, you know, um, where it's going, we don't know. We're gonna be guessing a little bit because yeah. costs are changing on a daily basis. But, you know, we take a lot of risk. So, you know, if it's the right site, we're long-term players. We don't build and sell, we typically hold. So if it's the right site, we can make it work. If it's the right site, and have you guys been finding the right site lately necessarily? Or is We've that had still? a lot of success. Yeah. I, mean, I, okay. I don't know if you went and checked out our website or been in any of our properties, but if you have, they, they all seem to be doing pretty good right now. Well, I, I have actually. I'm glad you mentioned that. I've been to your property in New Braunfels. Okay. I've seen that intersection one of my there. Ones. It's, it's a hopping intersection. Yeah, it is. And that's one of the things I think that's a good way to go ahead and open it up to this property. Um, you know, I mean, you're talking about use, you're talking about economics and location, and that intersection in New Braunfels, that is hopping. And this land right here that we've been talking about, this is a 36 acre piece of land on a very similar intersection here in South College Station. So you'll see right here, this is Highway 6 and this is Highway 40. Now, between these two, we've got over 75,000 vehicles per day coming through here. And as you can see, yeah, as you can see, the other three uh, corners of this intersection, they've been snatched up and they've been developed for a while. We've got a Lowe's, we've got a HEB, we've got a Walgreens on here. So they're going. All good users. Yeah, for sure. So what does that kind of traffic, that kind of um, visitors look like mean for NewQuest? Well, I think it, it's it's comparison. You know, we, we obviously like to use some of our other properties to compare sites to. and. We, we love HEB, we love Lowe's, um, but you know, sometimes when you get here and you're the last guy to the intersection, some of the uses have gone away. 
And so Absolutely. I've got to be able to figure out, you know, what type of use to put on this property, what is the highest and best use. And then if a Costco goes up the street, you know, am I better suited to actually just buy a piece of property next to Costco? Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is you might be a little concerned regarding this location just as kind of a limitation uh, from the competition already there, maybe. Yeah, well, I mean, so the question is, if they're already there, um, what's left? You know, yeah. so you got to do a void analysis to kind of understand, you know, is there is there a use for the property? So I don't know if you have any ideas. Well, I do. And you mentioned void analysis. In my preparation for today, I did do a void analysis on South College Station. And before I get into my findings, I think it's very important to be aware of the voids that we have in College Station or in South College Station and the needs because the demographic in South College Station, these are families, they're not looking to come up north by campus necessarily. They're kind of a more sophisticated bunch. They're not looking to go be around a bunch of college students. And what we found is that in South College Station, right, we don't have a movie theater within seven miles of this place, oh, that's good right? There's a Tiff's Treats, there's a, uh, a Crumble Cookies up north, but they're not close and they don't deliver down here, right? Okay. There's not a cookie okay. place around here. There's not a brunch place around here. And right, I mean, the list goes on, right? We've got healthy restaurants, nothing very close. Um, and so really, I think where that all ties into the story of this land that I'm personally think sets this apart is you see, I'm gonna pull out this visual real quick. As you see, this is our land highlighted here. And behind it, this is a master development with almost 1500 homes with an average household income approaching $150,000 a year. That's great. All right. And so we talked about those uses and we have discretionary income here looking for places to go, actively seeking out things to do, actively seeking out those things that are missing in South College Station. And you've got it right here. What does that mean for New Quest as far as this land goes? So if you're saying that there's a need for entertainment, for example. Um, are there any restrictions on the site? So as far as restrictions, what kind of restrictions would necessarily concern well, you? Well, can I build a theater? Can you build a theater? Yes, you okay. can. Okay. Um, so we talk, I will just kind of disclaimer, the only restrictions that there are is that you see in this corner right here, we have Pebble Creek Elementary School, okay. which back to this map is right there. We cannot have alcohol sales within a couple thousand feet of that front door. But as far as how that looks on that property, that is about that radius. Okay. So yeah, it's just a portion of the property. That that actually looks like it's it maybe an area that we can put detention. Um, so uh, what do you know about this other site that I was curious about? Anything? Yeah. So as far as that other site right down the road by Costco, I will tell you one thing that I found is it's already under contract, and I know that's not necessarily going to totally deter you. I know New Do you have any idea what the price is? So right now, the price on that land is $10 million. It's priced at about seven and a half per square foot. Okay, okay. So I will say just straight up, this land, we don't know the pricing exactly on this land yet, but you can expect it to be a little bit more than that other land because this is premium land and that's okay. why I bring it to New Quest. Okay. New Quest is a premium So firm. do you have any idea who that buyer is or what they want to do with that site? Is he going to be competition to me? Well, as far as who the buyer is, I cannot say for sure, but what I'd right. like to do is I'd like to show you a little overview of that land because the uses on that land are very limited. Um, so let me just get this pulled up. Okay. What we have here, and you can just kind of zoom in right there. Oh yeah. So this is that plot of land for Costco. Okay. Now look behind you. On this land, we have a floodplain and we have it zoned for industrial. There's oh, wow. not going to be a single house built ever in the future. So the property that's within rented, yeah. a mile of yeah. that house yeah. well, or a mile of that property. Well, good, good. That that kind of makes it uh, easy for me to focus on the other side. Exactly. Let's, uh, yeah. let's go back to it and start thinking about you know what else we can do with it. Yeah. So as far as uses, I know we talked kind of a few minutes ago about uses. What did I throw out there that interested you the most? Well, it's a pretty good sized site. So I, I obviously need some bigger users. Theater's good. You mentioned some of the smaller restaurants, which are just pad users. Um, any other large users you would suggest? I mean, the health club or is there a sporting goods or, um, you know, I, I don't really 
I haven't been to College Station and focused on the, the actual um, users. So, um, what, who, who's not here? Absolutely, and I think that's where I come in as a specialist in the College Station area. Um, and really, this goes down to the financial rationale behind this land is that we have such a void in South College Station. All those things that you just mentioned. So let's start with the sporting goods store. There is not a Dick sporting goods store within, I don't think there's actually, no, I don't think, there is not uh, one in College, College Station. Station. There's an academy down the road, but it's difficult to get to as far as access goes from here. It's, okay. it's about three miles away. Okay. You mentioned a fitness club. All the fitness clubs in South College Station within a five mile radius, they're all very boutique fitness clubs oh, so geared guys. towards, yes, they're yeah. usually geared towards women. There is one fitness club within five miles that is geared towards men, okay. and it is not a high-end fitness club. Lifetime Fitness is a perfect candidate oh, for here. Good. That's a good use. Right? As you have a high-end demographic back there, that is Lifetime's target market. It would be an easy sell for them. And then on top of that, you mentioned, um, you had talked about uh, grocery stores, yeah. right? We don't have a high-end grocery store in the area. What would be great here is a Whole Foods. Right? Yeah. And so- I, think I kind of agree with that. I don't, do you think Whole Foods is too high uh, priced for college station? Uh, not for South College Station. Okay. What we've seen, Good incomes. if you look at the difference between the 2010 and the 2020 census on these areas, the whole housing areas, even outside of this map, we've seen steady growth in average household income, which means that you've seen very good growth in discretionary income. Well, it's 1,500 homes, but what do you think about these farmers over here? Do you think they're going to come in and shop at Whole Foods? I can't speak to the farmers, but what I can speak to is the fact that I'll pull out this. Oh, there you go. If we look at a five mile radius, as far as the total population, we're looking at 50,000. Okay. We've seen steady growth over the past two decades at about 3% compounded annually. And it's projected that that is going to continue for the next four to five decades. So we're talking about the farmers. Honestly, I'm not worried about the farmers. Well, see how you look at these demographics. I think you need to pay attention to the fact that in one mile, that's, that's a good number. But if, if you go out to five miles, it's, it drops from 136 to 81. And then you go to 10 miles, it goes from 81 to 57. So there's yeah. less income out there. Um, I do think Whole Foods would be a good use. I, I don't know that they, they uh, can actually sell their product to some of those people, but I, I think it's a good idea. So what I'm hearing is that you're a little concerned about, although we do have a very wealthy demographic in the near area, it's not necessarily consistent when you get beyond that and you think that might limit the traffic to any high-end stores. That well, happen? so, you know, from a shopping perspective, you want to bring in, you mentioned a theater. So a theater is a destination type of use. So you're going to go a long ways to go to a good theater, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a good movie and you want to go see Mission Impossible or something, you're going to drive 20 minutes. So um, a Whole Foods daily. And so some of the uses that you put on the property are going to change as far as the traffic's concerned but overall i think the site looks good um are there utilities to the site that is one of the beautiful things about this site i'm going to tell you right now i think the icing on the cake for this site is that if you look in the back corner of this site there's already a bank developed utilities electricity sewage has already been run out oh, to the wow. land i didn't know that in addition to that because of the developments you have around you have stoplights here and here Okay, you can't put one here because of regulations. The only one you might have to install is back here. Oh, wow. We're talking about a piece of property that is the most accessible piece of property in South College Station, and you may only have to put one stop sign yeah. or one stoplight. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think with the stop sides, I'm more focused on really, um, you know, Fitch and, and, and certainly Highway 6. Do you know anything about signage? Can, you, can I put some signs on the property? Well, let me ask you real quick, as far as what we mentioned about the utilities already being on site and the stoplights mentioned, obviously that or that decreases the development cost of this. What does that mean for New Quest as far I mean, as we can pay? We can pay more for the dirt. If, yeah. If I don't have to spend the money on what we call off-sites and, and, and everything is to the site and I don't have to bring that in, then I certainly can pay more for the land. So that, that's, that's a that's a you know encouraging thing. I, I don't know. I've heard this this seller on this property is difficult. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I think is honestly good. I know that may be what you have heard, but so far from everything we can tell, we've heard nothing to the contrary. Is that the developer who made this master plan development 
used to own this land or currently owns land they're the seller of it they had it planned for a small expansion <coughs> of amenities but okay. they've been selling these houses so fast i mean they're going faster than they can build them that they don't feel like they need to develop this in order to attract potential residents oh. so they're selling it and the thing is that means they've already met their financial goals whatever they get for this is extra okay. and from all indications that we've seen it does not appear that they will be hard bargainers it appears that they're going to kind of go pretty gentle on this so okay well tell me uh, a little bit about your company i don't really know much about Revly. well as far as Revly commercial real estate we've been specializing in college station real estate for the past 20 years and through that time we've seen tremendous growth in the area that you're looking at in south college station i cannot emphasize this enough that you looking at this particular piece of land um, really i think is a, is a fantastic idea because as i mentioned we've seen these houses going fast we've got more expansion coming you're have getting you, your have foot you sold door. anything in the area yes i have as a matter of fact uh recently i sold a 6.1 acre tract over off of harvey mitchell and uh, 2818. awesome do you know yeah. what they're what the user or what the buyer is going to do with it uh, yeah, it's looking like it's just going to be general retail, kind of okay. targeted more towards college students, though. This is uh, a, a little bit. Okay. Uh, a smaller yeah. development, because six acres probably isn't that much. Yeah. Okay. Now, let me ask you, do you have any questions, any concerns so far from what we've seen that might prevent you from going forward with this deal? No, I mean, right now, I think you've given me a plenty of information to share with my partners. Um, I, I, I am going to need to know more about the pricing of the property. Absolutely. Um, I need to know more about the seller. You know, you mentioned that they're ready to sell. Uh, that's a good thing. Sometimes there's some complications with sellers. So anything you can give me would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how about this? Let's schedule a time sometime maybe next Friday, if that works for you, to come up to College Station, we'll walk this land together, we'll get a feel hands-on, and maybe during that time we can set a meeting with the seller, we can talk to them, we can get a feel for them, and we can get ready to put together a letter of intent, get some bid numbers going, it's working towards closing that deal. Does that work for you? Uh, let me check. Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, I think I'm going to be at the Old Miss game next, that, that weekend. So, yeah, we can you work weekends? I'm, I, I would love for you, Mr. Lane, I would love to be working a weekend. And if it's about a football game, it's not really work. So let's do this. The Ole Miss football game, I believe it's in the evening. It's yeah. going to be a primetime game. How about you come up here around 10 a.m. We'll go ahead. We'll walk this land. We can spend some time together in the evening, go tailgating, and watch a great game. Sounds yeah, like a great time. Perfect. So I look forward to it. Well, thank you very you much. In. I look forward to seeing you I'm on Saturday. One of my cards. Good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate that very much. And I wanted to leave you with my resume as well. I brought this ahead of time.